Hello, and welcome to this workshop webinar on time management. My name is Christina Page, and I'm a learning strategist at KPU. I'll be your guide through this workshop today. To maximize your learning today, you may wish to gather semester and weekly schedule templates. You can find them in a link in the video description, or if you'd rather a physical copy, you can come to the Learning Centers for a copy of these documents. You'll also want some space to take notes, like a notebook or a document. So here's our learning goals for today. We're going to discuss some factors to consider when managing time as a student. We'll quantify uh, the ways in which you currently spend your time, or in other words, see where your time is currently going. We'll identify an ideal time budget for priority activities. We'll describe strategies for time management at the semester, weekly, and daily levels. And we'll discuss ways to productively allocate study time. So we all have the same 168 hours a week. So where does your time go and how do you find out? So for most students, you'll have a mix of study. Um, a lot of students will have work in that mix, sleep, of course, and then everything else in life. Uh, so chores and recreation, friends. So where does that time go? So one way to figure out is to spend a week or two doing a process of time tracking. So making a log of where your time goes, how you're currently spending your time, so you can see what changes you might want to make in order to reach your ideal time budget. So in order to time track, what you would do, you would just have a piece of paper or a notebook, and every hour you would just make a note of what you're doing. So if you're at work, if you're studying, what kinds of things are you, are you doing? And after the week, add up how much time you're spending in each of these areas and then you'll have space for evaluation. Are there areas that you're spending more time than you intend right now? Are there areas that you're spending not as much time as you might like to, to achieve your goals and the results you're looking for? From there, you'll be able to see what you might want to balance out and what your ideal plan might be. So of course, as you do your time tracking, you might also identify some of those ways that you're wasting time or spending time in less than your ideal ways. So you're going to want to see what those time wasters are and see what changes you might want to make. So identify what your time wasters are. So for some people, that's a lot of time on social media. Others, that might be time on Netflix or online video. And for other people, that might even be multitasking. So trying to do multiple things at once. And often we think that we're really effective at this, uh, but often what we know is we're less effective than we think at multitasking. So we might think that we're being really productive and doing two or three things at the same time, but in reality, we aren't really achieving or focusing on either one of those things well. So we might actually want to see how can we stop trying to do two or three things at once and devote some more focused time for priority tasks. Another time waster could even be a lack of a daily plan. Um, so you wake up in the morning not sure what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, so you're not able to really focus and dig into those high priorities. And lastly, another way that we can waste time is uh, by putting off hard tasks that are a priority. Uh, so we know that something is a bit challenging for us, so we decide, okay, I'll do something else first. I'll do that high priority but hard thing later on. So take a moment now and identify uh, what are your time wasters. It can be one of those five things, it could be something else. So what things are going on in your life where you're spending time not really as you intend that you might want to make some small shifts? So now identify what your action step is. Uh, so we talked about time tracking, seeing where the time is going. We've talked about identifying some time wasters. So how will you currently identify how you spend your time? So it might be that you'll decide to, for the next week, do a time log and see, and see what's going on. Or you might want to focus on some specific areas. So you might want to see how much time am I really putting into my academic study or coursework. So uh, take a moment and identify what will you do next to identify how you currently spend your time. So now we're going to move on to looking at three levels of strategic time management. So we're going to divide the time management process into semester time management, weekly time management, and daily time management. So semester time management is where we look at the medium term. 
So in academic life, often things are divided into these blocks of 12 to 13 weeks, uh, where we have a cycle of learning, classes, assignments, exams. And so in the semester time planning, we're going to look at what are the key priorities that are going to unfold over the semester, and how do we achieve some balance in between some of the lighter and heavier weeks that can unfold in a semester. Next, we're going to look at the weekly level of time management, and finally, we'll move on to daily time management, or how to manage tasks and to-dos. So how do we look at semester planning? So the first step is to gather all of your course presentations together. Next, you're going to look at the course presentations and you're going to pay particular attention to any due dates and any significant academic activities. Um, so they can be uh, presentations, they can be dates that homework is due, quizzes are due, and of course major assignments, tests, and exams. So you're going to add all of these important dates to a semester planning chart and you might want to color code those by course. Next, you're going to add in any significant life events, uh, big commitments or fun things even, that uh, you know are going to happen uh, in the semester. And lastly, you're going to post the semester schedule in an easily accessible place so you can see it and refer back to it often. So let's take a look at what this can look like in practice. Um, so we see here our semester, uh, our semester schedule starting with week one of the semester and going into uh, the end of the semester, the exam week. So as you can see, uh, a default template is going to list week one, week two, week three, week four. So you're going to want to start by identifying for this semester what dates do, do those weeks actually happen on. So you've got the dates for, uh, for the weeks here in each week slot. Then you're going to go course by course and add those due dates into uh, the semester schedule. Uh, so you can see that the student who prepared this schedule was taking four different classes, and each of those ha have a color code. And then you see here, okay, week three on Wednesday, there was a math assignment due that was worth 10% of the grade. So the math assignment is here, and uh, we can see that due date highlighted. And then we see on Thursday, again, there's another two assignments due that week. And so you'll go on adding those in until you've got all of those uh, test assignments, uh, uh, presentations and quizzes in your semester schedule. So why do this? How can this help? So often what happens in an academic semester, the way things are organized, is there tends to be some clusters of time that there's more assignments, things get a little bit heavier. So for example, we see week two in the semester um, and week one, uh, there aren't really any due dates. But once we get into week three and week four, uh, there's a cluster of due dates here. And again, week seven, week eight, week nine, we see there's a lot going on in academic life. So knowing this ahead of time, seeing if there's any spots where there's a lot of things due for a number of classes, that allows you to plan backwards and decide how do you want to allocate time in the weeks that aren't as full. So, uh, so you might find that there's, uh, there's a week that every course has an assignment due. And that can feel a little bit overwhelming. But knowing that ahead of time allows you to make some choices to see, okay, week, week four is looking really heavy, but I've got some time on week two or three. So let me start the, uh, those assignments. Let me do, do what I can ahead of time and get the work done for one or two of those things so I can pace out and manage my time. So you can also see on this, uh, uh, on this student's schedule that there are some fun things in there as well. It's not all academic. So having a sense of what's coming up, the fun things, and even the rewards uh, when you've made it through that, uh, that semester or that challenging period of the semester uh, can, help, can help keep things in perspective as well. So your action step now is to go and to make the first draft of your semester schedule. Uh, so you're going to pause the video and either take uh, a paper copy or look on an online copy and take out all of, all of your course presentations and do this task. Make a semester schedule with all of your due dates and your important dates in there. And then identify where can you post that so you'll have access to it often. Next, we're going to move on to weekly planning. And weekly planning is uh, where we think through, thinking back to the activity we did at the beginning, the time budgeting, how do we want to spend our time on average week to week? How do we make sure that we really have time for all of the coursework, 
um, our, our jobs, our family uh, commitments, other elements of our lives. How do we make sure that it all actually fits in? So a weekly schedule is where we look at all of our life commitments and, uh, and really do some thoughtful planning into where in the week does that actually fit and how do I make sure in the midst of all of this that I have life balance. So when you're making a weekly schedule, the first thing that you're going to want to do is note any of your fixed commitments. So anything that happens at the same time week to week. So for example, if you know that you have a class on Tuesday from uh, 10 to 1, you've got another class on Friday from 1 to 4, those are going to be things you're going to block in your schedule right away. So you'll note the block and you'll shade it in and you'll note what activity are you doing in that period. And um, if, your work's, if you work on a fixed schedule, if you have any, any uh, volunteer or co-op commitments on a fixed schedule, those will also go on your weekly, weekly planning chart in those spaces. So you're going to fill in everything, you're going to shade it in. So that will give you a bit of a picture. What are the fixed commitments? What do I really need to do each week? The next step is to figure out when your independent study time is going to fall. So often we see the class uh, commitments first and it's a little more challenging to think of when am I going to do those out of class activities. So how many post-secondary classes are designed is that you have for every one hour that you spend in class, you're going to spend another two to three hours uh, doing out of class work. Um, so that can be assignments, that can be uh, reading, that can be preparing for exams. So uh, when you're thinking of a time budget, so for example, if you've got a course that's three hours in class, you're going to know already that you, you're going to ex expect to spend about six to nine hours out of class um, each week doing some work related to that course. So, um, so then on your weekly schedule, you're going to actually think through, when am I going to do that out of class time? When is that going to be scheduled? Um, so you're going to uh, select some other blocks and fill them in. So if you're, doing, uh, if you're doing an English class, you're going to identify some other blocks throughout the week that you're going to do uh, the reading, the assignments, um, and the preparation for that course. Um, if you've got a science course, you're going to have your lab time, of course, but you're going to think of, you know, the, again, the reading time, the preparation. Uh, if you've got a quiz, when are you going to prepare for those things? So a few things to think about as you're thinking of how would that schedule look like? So a very common mistake that I often see uh, when students are thinking about how do I allocate that time is, uh, is for example, if there is a psychology class on a Tuesday, um, all of the psychology prep or homework I uh, get scheduled in one big block on a Monday. So there's a few reasons that that's not the most effective uh, strategy that you can choose. So the first reason for that, so let's say I take class on Tuesday. And, um, and the information is fresh in my mind, I, I've done some learning, but then I don't look at it on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So what's going to happen, all that information that I knew well on Tuesday, I'm going to start to lose, uh, to lose that learning. That information is not going to stay as fresh in my mind. But if I look at it again on Wednesday, and perhaps on Friday, and once on Saturday, my learning level is going to stay high. I'm going to encounter that information again and again. Um, so I'm going to be able to retain it more effectively than if I didn't look at it at all that week. The second reason for avoiding a full day block devoted to one class is often, um, often our attention spans are less than we want to admit they are. So really intending to focus on something for, uh, for six to eight hours is not likely to play out in reality. Um, so we, uh, what we know about our attention and focus is uh, for most of us, the maximum tends to be somewhere between 60 and 90 minutes. So there's uh, some theories that would say the maximum is really more like at, at 60 minutes. Others would say, yeah, uh, we can focus for more like 90 minutes, but not much beyond that. So that's the kind of time period you're going to want to think about uh, for your preparation for, uh, uh, for a single class, your work on a single class. Um, so there's a few exceptions um, like um, to that. As some people find, for example, a coding project or something that uh, that devotes a lot of attention to a single problem, you might want a, a, lo a longer block. But often you're going to want to think of study time in those one hour to one one and a half hour blocks. So for uh, so taking my example psychology course. So let's say I took class on Tuesday. I'm going to schedule even one hour on Tuesday uh, to review that, to go, to go over my notes. 
then I might spend another um, hour or two on Thursday, another hour or two on Friday, and maybe another hour or two on Monday. So I'm going to spread out that time. So as you do your, uh, your schedule, your step now is going to fill in all of those study times, those blocks for, for the different classes, and that will give you a good sense of, do you really have enough time in there to, to prepare for all of your classes as well as you want to? And if it doesn't seem to fit, that's where you can start to think about adjustments. So other things to think about in the weekly planning step are life balance. So it's very easy to think, okay, I've got, uh, I've got school, I've got work um, and, family, uh, and family commitments, but where do I have space for the things I need to do to take care of myself, to stay healthy, uh, so that I'm able to learn effectively? So you also want to see that you've got some exercise time in there, that you've got time for adequate sleep, and that you've got some space for, uh, for uh, recreation as well. So you might even want to think about having one day, if you're able to schedule it, that's completely free from any kind of study activity. Um, if not, um, a long block like an, like an afternoon or an evening. So that you do have that time and space for a social life and, re um, and recreation. And then you also want to think on a day-by-day -day basis. What time is there for rest and recreation and eating and exercise in order to stay healthy, in order to attend to uh, your whole person, uh, being able to effectively do uh, what you need to do and be healthy so that you can continue to do it. So as you look at that balance, so try, if possible, uh, to include at least one study-free day per week. Be sure that exercise is included in your weekly plan and identify a daily activity that's restful or enjoyable for you and include time for adequate sleep. So let's take a look at a couple of uh, case studies, scenarios that students uh, frequently encounter and think about how they might apply to doing a weekly schedule. So imagine a friend I, I, I came to you, they were working on a weekly schedule and they asked for your advice. So what advice would you give to a student that's drafting a weekly schedule, they're working on their weekly schedule, and they find there's not enough time for their current activities. How would you help them? What advice would you give? Yeah. So we have encountered a, a challenge here. So uh, what do we do? That uh, when we do the weekly schedule and identify that it doesn't fit, that's often an indicator to us that as hard as it may be, we might need to think about making some changes for our own health and well-being and, uh, and academic success. So if there isn't a way to make it all fit and eat and sleep and stay healthy, uh, that's when the choices come in about, okay, do I need to take uh, five classes this semester? Could I take four? Uh, do I need to work as many hours as I am? Could I make some changes there? Is there an optional or, uh, or a volunteer to your commitment that I might want to pull back on a little bit. So in this scenario, uh, uh, there aren't often a lot of easy answers, but it gives us an indicator that we might want to make some hard choices now, some course correction now, so we don't find ourselves in an even more uh, challenging situation or too much of an overload later on. Let's look at a second case study. So what advice would you give to a student who experiences significant changes in their weekly schedule. For example, a variable work schedule that changes week to week. So take a moment now and write down your advice. So if you have a variable work, work schedule, one thing to consider is how often you do this weekly, uh, weekly schedule exercise. So for a student that has a fairly fixed schedule, not a lot changes from week to week, you might be able to make it once at the, be at the beginning of the semester and stick roughly to that same schedule all the way through. If that's not you, and there's a lot of changes in your life week to week, a lot of fluctuation, a different way to use a weekly schedule is to use it as a weekly planning activity. So you might take some time, perhaps on a Sunday night or a Monday morning, and identify how do you want to plan out the week ahead? Uh, what does work look like this week? What does class look like this week? And make a plan for each week on a week-to-week -week basis. So at this point, uh, we're going to pause and we're going to take some time to apply. Uh, so again, I would invite you to either take out a paper weekly schedule template or download an online version and begin to do that weekly schedule planning. 
So try it out. Uh, this doesn't need to be a final, final schedule. You can make some adjustments and changes later on. But based on what you know now about your time commitments, what do you think an ideal weekly schedule for you might look like? Once you've done a draft of your schedule, continue on in the workshop. So now we're going to look at planning your day. And this is where we look at day-to-day -day task management. So how do you plan your day right now? Um, is it with a paper planner? Is it with a digital app? Or are you, not, uh, are you not using a tool right now to plan your day? So in terms of the paper planner and, and digital app, there's not a right or wrong answer here at all. That's one of those things that's entirely up to you, your personal preference. So you might find that um, a list on paper is the way to go for you. You might find that an app works. There's a lot, a lot of uh, free apps that sync in between your computer and your cell phone, for example. Um, so it can be the Reminders app or To Do. There's a wide range of options there. So a few things to I consider. The first is keeping a prioritized list. So knowing what you have to do, what you might want to do, and what's and, and what's not so important for today. So as you're thinking about the list of what needs to happen, you might want to find a system to identify what's the priority, what are those number one things they have to happen today. What things are the things you would like to do today, but if they don't get done today, it's not a big deal, they can shift later on. And then what things don't need to be done today. So especially in the heavy times of the semester, there can be a lot of things in our mind, but when we're thinking about daily planning, we want to focus down to what do I want to do today? A second principle to think about in your daily planning is to break large tasks into small tasks. Um, so one way that I define a task is anything that takes less than an hour to complete. So, um, so again, a common challenge that students can have when doing a to-do list is how to put these big items on there. So something like an English essay or, or preparing for an exam, how does that go on a to-do list? And commonly, we might just uh, list out a checkbox for do English paper. But that can be less effective because, um, for example, in some cases, that's not even something we can do in a single day. That's a process that we're going to need to divide out over, uh, over several days. So we're not really able to define our daily goal and to see if we're on track. So if I were to break down a large task into a small task, I would think about how do I divide that into multiple steps that are an hour or less to complete. So if I'm thinking of a research paper, for example, my first task might be to do some preliminary research and choose a topic. So that's one task right there. My second task might be to make an appointment with a librarian and find five articles for my paper. Another task might be to read uh, one of these articles and take some good notes. So that's a, that's a third task. If I'm later on in the process, a task might be to, uh, to write a thesis statement and an outline for my paper. Another task might be to write the introduction paragraph. Another task uh, late in the process would be to edit the paper. So as you can see, I've taken that one big task of writing a paper and identified what are the small steps there. And then the small tasks are what you're going to want to have on your daily planning list. So you can see what, what steps do I need to do today, tomorrow, the day after that uh, to get the paper done. And you've got the bonus of seeing the progress that you're making. So you don't have a big item that stays on, on your list day after day after day. You're able to really see, have I, made, uh, have I made progress on my steps for today? A last principle to keep in mind is uh, to make sure you have a reward for, uh, for completing the day's tasks. So make sure there's something enjoyable to you that's going to happen when the workday is done. So one of the, uh, the kind of traps of student life is it's very easy to get into a mindset of working all the time. So you've got these, uh, these assignments, so many things going on in life, it can be very easy to get stuck in a cycle where you're thinking, okay, I just have to work all the time. Uh, without really having breaks and rewards and starts and ends to, uh, to what the workday is. Uh, so something that can actually help you to stay on track is having that defined kind of a workday. So when you've got, uh, so the weekly schedule will, will give you the time blocks that you intend to work, and the daily schedule will give you the tasks that need to happen. 
and will allow you to have that sense of when the tasks are done, the workday is done, I can enjoy that time uh, with friends or the recreational activity or the video I wanted to watch. And then it, and then it becomes a guilt-free thing, it's, it's a reward. And that can help to shift you from, uh, from a cycle of uh, procrastination where it's very easy to, uh, to want to do the things that are most enjoyable first because you're not really sure when the work is going to end. But if you can define your day so you know when the work ends, when have I done what I need to do, then you're able to uh, put the work aside, put it mentally aside, and to really lean into and enjoy those other aspects of life. So again, some other principles that we might want to think of as we look at how do we enhance, how do we allocate our study time to be able to use it productively. So first of all, the principle that we already discussed is really allocating those pre-planned and focused blocks of time for specific tasks. A second thing to consider is alternating between tasks and subjects. So as we talked about earlier, um, perhaps it's not as effective to have uh, one course only looked at in one long block in a single day. Um, so you might want to spend an hour on psychology, then an hour on biology, then an hour on English. So alternating a little bit uh, between subjects. And lastly, take advantage of small blocks of time. So as you're planning, um, as you're planning uh, your day, you might notice there's some times that come up that kind of seem like lost time. Uh, so time, for example, that we might spend on transit, time that we might spend um, having to wait from uh, one class to another. So also think about how you're going to take advantage of those small blocks of time. So one example might be um, if you've got some time where you're on a bus in transit. So this probably isn't the time to do uh, the heaviest tasks that you have or some really difficult reading, but it can be a time, for example, if you've made some flashcards for a class to take those out and go over them. Um, it might be a time where we're able to read over and review some notes. So think about what when are those small blocks of time in the day and are there tasks that can go into that time that would otherwise be wasted? All right, so we've had a lot of information here. We've talked about time tracking, we've talked about uh, semester, weekly, and daily schedules. So now I would invite you to pause and reflect and decide what are the key takeaways that you have uh, from this workshop. What's most important for you to know and remember? So I'd, I'd take a moment here and, uh, and write down, take a note of what are the key things that based on what you've learned here, you want to start doing and putting into practice right away. It's also important to keep in mind that you're not alone in this journey. So you can find more information and resources on time management um, at our website, kpu.ca slash learning centers. The other thing to consider is if you want to book an appointment with a learning, a learning strategist. So perhaps you've worked on your semester and weekly schedules and you feel like, I've got a question, I would really like to talk, uh, talk about this with somebody. Uh, that is a great opportunity to book an appointment with a learning strategist. Uh, we love to talk through these principles and to talk about how they would apply to you in your specific case. So you can book those appointments at tlc.kpu.ca. Thanks so much, and we're looking forward to continuing to connect with you.